Say rolling around, sitting on doves, can't lie, I was high on shrubs. So then topical back with another video. I'm Strange Wang. He is Nate. Today we're doing top 10. How to put my phone down for that one. Top 10 most anticipated movies for 2022. So he's going to tell you about our social media and how our top 10s work. If you scroll down to the description box below, pop it open, you'll find links to our social media accounts. So click on those and give us a follow. You also find links to our Patreon account and our coffee account. So if you would like to help us out in a financial way so that we may expand and grow our channel so that I could actually hold my phone during videos instead of us using it to film, that'd be great. Okay, man. Arnold. If you don't know how we do our top 10s, He's gonna pop through his bottom five pretty quick. I'm gonna pop through my bottom five pretty quick, and then we'll go five, four, five, four, three, two, three, two, trade off number ones. You just talk too damn much. My number 10 <laughs> is a movie called Bullet Train, and it has my favorite actor right now, which is Brad Pitt. He's in this movie, so I wanna go see it. Simple as that. My number nine is a very stupid romantic comedy. It was probably a stupid romantic comedy called Marry Me. It got Jennifer Lopez and Owen Wilson in it but it reminds me a lot of Notting Hill, and I love Notting Hill, and I love shitty romantic comedies, because deep down, Strange Wayne's a sucker at heart. So I can't wait for this shitty romantic comedy. I'm gonna take a honey dip to go see it, hopefully. If I can find the right honey dip, I might take two honey dips to go see it. That'd be, I don't know, that's a lot of money. Fuck that, I might just go by myself. Tell them about it. <laughs> Number eight is gonna be The Northman, Robert Eggers. He made Lighthouse and The Witch. You'll get an original last movie. <laughs> You're not going to see another movie like that this year. So that's why I made my list. My number seven is going to be 65. The two people who wrote The Quiet Place, they make, they're making this movie. And you got Adam Driver in it. And Adam Driver's fantastic. In one movie, he goes, ghouls. <laughs> and it's maybe his worst movie. <laughs> ghouls. And then another show, he says, good soup. And then... In the last two movies I saw of him this year, he's been eating a lot of pussy, so that might be his contract, so he might get some coochie eating in this one. Who knows? But 65, that's my number seven. My number six is Killers of the Moon Flower. Mark Scorsese. He's making a movie. Shut up and take my money. Uh, so my number 10 is going to be Top Gun Maverick. Uh, yeah, get out of here. Uh, Tom Cruise is in this movie. I like Tom Cruise as an actor. I don't know how I'd feel about him as a person, uh, but I also just think that, like, I don't know if it's just because I grew up with, like, Star Wars and X-Wings and shit like that, too, but, like, even in video games, I've just always loved, like, flight simulators, and I just think that jet planes are really fucking cool, and the trailers that they've shown have shown some really, really cool shots of them doing stuff in planes that they couldn't do in the first movie, but they still did really good in the first movie, so if they can make that even better, then I'm here for it. Uh, my number nine is going to be Nope. Don't know anything about it, but it's a Jordan Peele movie. And like a Jordan Peele like written and directed movie. So I don't know about that. Oh, I got you one. <laughs> uh, yeah, like nothing is released about it other than uh, Daniel Kaluuya is rumored to be the star. So no idea. But he always, like he did that with Get Out and Us too. Everything was very close to the chest until it was like really time to start promoting it. But like hasn't missed yet so i'm down uh my number eight is going to be the northman edgars has made two really really good movies so far he's probably going to make another really good movie that makes sense to me uh my number seven was even a bit of surprise to me and i honestly don't even know if i can explain to you why i'm excited about this movie but i am <laughs> and it's funny because the first trailer that we watched for it, the teaser I'm pretty sure I was like, this is stupid, and I'm mad that it exists. But I actually went with Lightyear uh, because... You did hey, shit on that movie. Yeah, I did. And okay. then we saw the second trailer, and I was like, okay, that's kind of cool. Like, that's kind of cool. I like that. And the more I've thought about it, it's like, okay, it's... There's been a second trailer? It's Yeah. Well, there was, it was a teaser and a trailer. Uh -huh. um, so, uh, it's Pixar. They... They just don't miss anymore. They don't. And so I trust them to take a spin-off character from their first ever movie and still find a way to pack a lot of heart and adventure in it. Uh, which is what it... Huh? Buzz Lodge was first. Okay, whatever. 
stupid. And then my number six is going to be Killers of the Flower Moon because Martin Scorsese and Leonardo DiCaprio and a lot of other really famous people in a Scorsese movie. Let's do it. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Number five for me may be a... Zemeckis. It is... You like this movie way more than I did. And you were... Not way more, but you were more okay to a sequel of it when it was announced, but Knives Out too. That's my number five. Wow. Yeah. I'm I'm still really hesitant of another Knives Out movie, just because the first one is so fucking good. Yeah. But a lot of the reasons why I like that movie was not because of Daniel Craig, but he's the glue, and it's a good glue. Like, if you're going to go with a glue, Daniel Craig's like the gorilla glue of the movie, you know? It's like, mm-hmm. so hopefully everything else around him works just as well. Because, like, he comes in, like, what, 15 minutes to the movie? Something like that. And then a lot of it's the girl, mostly, you know what I'm saying? And, like, flashbacks and stuff. So hopefully it's just as good, if not better. I hope so. I don't disagree with anything that you said, other than I'm just not nearly as hesitant as you are. Because uh, that dude makes good movies. And I think he's going to make another good movie. And I trust that like the supporting cast around Daniel Craig, because we've already seen some of who's going to be in it, and there's a lot of talent in it. Who? And uh, I don't know. I was hoping you weren't going to ask me that, because I couldn't remember. But I remember that there are other famous people in it. <laughs> Dick. <laughs> you are cursed. So, yeah. It's anticipated. I'm anticipating the shit out of that movie. I really am. Number four for me, probably your number one, Spider-Verse 2. That's my number three. Okay. Wow. Wow. That's crazy. Wow. Yeah. (laughs) Wow. The teaser we watched didn't really give me much. Mm Mm-hmm. But like that little ugly motherfucker on Lord of the Rings, I want more. Because this movie, the first one was fucking fantastic. So good. It's Spider-Man. Yeah. And I really like Spider-Man, so I cannot wait for this movie. Because it's going to be great. And it's probably going to be great. Most likely going to be great. Most likely. They know how good that first one is. They're like, oh shit, we got to be top tier with this. So I cannot wait for that. And I'm not lying! Spider-Verse 2. We don't know a whole lot about it. We know some of the characters that are going to be in it. And we have a really vague idea of what the plot's going to be. But after how phenomenal that first movie was you just you, there's it's anticipated it's not even necessary that we're saying these are going to be great but you cannot convince me that i'm not gonna love that movie so it is absolutely very high on my like most anticipated list like i love the animation style i love the character like i love this world that they built uh so i'm stoked about that what else cool. uh and then my number four is the one that I added when I saw it on your list a second ago, which is Babylon, because it's Damien Chazelle. And he has not made a movie that I didn't like. He made two of my favorite movies of the last decade. Uh, and First Man is also very, very good. Underappreciated. It is underappreciated. Very underrated. No, I agree. It is. Babylon's my number two. Let's talk about it. And Brad Pitt's in this. Like, everything he said about Damien Chazelle is factual. Mm-hmm. Brad Pitt is my favorite actor at the moment. Mm -hmm. Like, every movie he's made in the the 2010s, like, after he did Miss... What's that called? Mr. and Mrs. Smith? Oh, yeah. Everything after that's been a banger. You know what I'm saying? Dude ain't missed. And from his last movie with Tarantino, Mm. he's not slowing down. Yeah. Like a fine wine getting better with age. Yeah. So working with a Danny Chazelle? Yeah. Insert that clip of Jim Jones. Ooh! I, I was going to make that same point. It's just like, I mean, he's literally jumping from a Tarantino movie, who is an incredibly stylistic director, obviously, to Damien Chazelle, who is kind of like, like to me, him and Jordan Peele are like the two like new, like most stylistic S direct, like new on, new on the scene, not working because there are plenty of stylistic directors working. Um, but in terms of like just doing things in your movie that just like, you see this type of shot, this is a Jordan Peele movie, or this yeah. is a Damien Chazelle movie. See, I kind of, to me personally, I kind of feel like Chazelle's more like a Spielberg or a, this is high praise already, but Spielberg, Spielberg. Spielberg. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> make the shark come out order. Yeah. Or Stanley Kubrick, where depending on the movie, they hide and let the movie do the talking for them. Mm-hmm. And then they're like La La Land and First Man obviously have some of the same qualities, but at different heights. Yeah. They know how to be a chameleon in their own movie and not let their style affect the movie too much. Sure. And I feel like Damon Chazelle fits in that category with those two directors perfectly because First Man, a lot of similarities to La La Land, but you don't see them as much. And same thing, vice versa. They're different heights. You yeah. know what I'm saying? No, when I it feel comes you. To styles. Yeah. Regardless, it's very clear that we both really like Damien Chazelle. Yeah, fucking and that we are not. both very much so anticipating this movie. Clearly! <laughs> no debating! Uh, and then my number three was Across the Spider-Verse, which I already talked about. Okay, my number three is going to be... Is it The Batman or Batman? It's The Batman. The Batman. And that's my number one. Really? Really. That's crazy. Is it? Yeah. As much think, as you love Spider Verse, I don't think that's I so honestly crazy. thought that was going to be your number Dude, one. It's fucking Batman. <laughs> oh, fucking hell. But yeah, I mean, where do I even begin? I don't know. Like from the trailers, that's we, my point. <laughs> trailers we saw. If I had to like do this as like rating, cast five stars, action choreography five stars, lighting. Setting, five stars. Fucking costume design, five stars. Mm-hmm. I think he's the penguin. The penguin's dialogue in the car, five yeah. stars. I think he's just cobblepot at that. Cobblepot, but, yeah. but yeah, he it is the penguin. But that dialogue in the car, five stars. Yeah, it's got a little humor in it too. You mm-hmm. have the darkness. Yeah, they like. <laughs> I'm so interested in. Like there, it's almost like they're saving Paul Dano. Like they just keep teasing him a little bit. We have like we, apparently there's an international trailer and it showed him a lot. Really? Okay. We got a little bit of his like just literally one quick little line of dialogue with his voice in the last trailer. <laughs> and getting I'm, arrested. And yeah. I'm so interested in as like why why are you hiding that? I fucking love Batman. Like I have loved him since I was old enough to recognize him as a character. Like when cognitive abilities developed. Batman was there. I had so many of his action figures. I like I'm not saying they're all good. There is not a single Batman movie that I don't like. Um and uh there's just like I just have a hard time believing that this is going to disappoint me with like the way that I set my expectations for things. So I'm super excited for this. Everything that you said was absolutely true. We're getting a Batman that we haven't had a live action version of yet in terms of like where he is in his Batmanian career. So that's exciting as shit. I love Robert Pattinson. Like Paul Dano has been good in everything that I've seen him in. Like notably there will be blood and Swiss army man and little bit sunshine. And like, I love all those movies and like the fact that he just does all this kind of weird shit, just like, yeah, make that dude the Riddler. Like, why not? I love that. And Colin Farrell, like, is obviously like the most seasoned person that we have. Zoe Kravitz is is Catwoman. That's like a like the casting in this. You said it yourself is just Chef's kiss. So I'm so excited for this movie, uh, and that's that's why it is my number one. It was my number three. My number three was that long. We talked about that. My number one is John Wick Four. It was my number two. Okay. Yeah. Jeez. They're all like right in there with yeah. each other. I mean, I like, don't understand like what the level of surprise is. Like, no, uh, John Wick Four is my honorable mention at eleven. Bro, <laughs> super kick in the face. <laughs> nah, I mean, I was that Paul was was like trying to comprehend words for my excitement <laughs> of this movie. Okay, because one was just like, hey, let's show you how badass Keanu Reeves can be. Yeah. And then number two was we're going to build this world that we peppered in the first one. Mm -hmm. So you got a lot of world building. And three, being my favorite John Wick movie in the trilogy so far, is the best of both worlds. And then a sequel. That's going to have a conclusion, hopefully. So I guess I don't, I, know, I don't know how far they're gonna ride this train, but I feel like you either stop at four or five. You can't drag it out much longer than that. 
like, oh, like it's going to be badass as fuck. The world building is damn near perfect. Mm-hmm. The characters are so well thought out, and his relationship with everyone in those movies are pretty well fleshed out for what you get yeah. time spending with them. Mm-hmm. Like, there's so much history with him and Halle Berry and so many questions, and she was only in half of three. Right. So, to, like, get more of that and more of everything that I got from three into four, but as usually action sequels go, bigger, badder, better, Mm -hmm. I cannot wait. That's why for number one. Makes sense. Yeah, at this point, I'm just stoked to see what other, like, crazy inventive ways they come up with him for for him to kill somebody that's true because i mean in three he's like slapping horses on the ass and get like making them kick people in the face right getting knives on his dick hey, yo. and like three was cool in that way too and then there was like it was almost 50 50 on like gunfights versus like swords or knives or whatever the fuck he could get his hands on Bro, right everything uh a book um so i hope he kills somebody with some good soup yeah there you go yeah and it's adam driver um yeah i agree with everything you said what i love about his relationship with the characters is that they do feel fleshed out and they do feel like you can just invest in his relation with them and it almost is all just how keanu reeves like plays those conversations with them but what i love about it is that when we're coming into this world like they don't feel the need they're like they don't feel the need to give us a single flashback they don't really need like they're not sitting there reminiscing about stories to use as exposition for us to learn about these characters they're just like sup john and then they either like team up or try to kill each other and it's just like and then there's hints at like who owes who's debt like who owes who debts because of certain situations because of that thing that happened in Ibiza or whatever. But it doesn't tell us, and I love that because it keeps the character mysterious even though we spent three movies with him so far. And I really hope they do not make a fucking prequel and just leave it that way. No. And this like, like the hotel, that's as far as you need to go for me. Yeah. Um, yeah, I don't know how many they're going to make. I mean, I think four... It's perfect. I think four would be great. Uh yeah i I would be happy with i'm riding this train as long as they're going to take me on it i trust them they haven't let me down yet you're more cynical than i am and i understand that the more movies you make that means the more chances there are to make a bad one i just like i think they have a vision for it and i think they're going to stop when that vision's complete and i trust that vision and i'm I'm really really excited about that movie me too obviously it's my number one Tell us your top 10 or some of your favorites, most anticipated movies coming out in 2022. Subscribe, up, hit the like button, share the video, and subscribe. It's not a game, sir.